koi fish will be the inspiration for our project on movement, one of the principles of design. We will create a wax resist. In Starry Night by Van Gogh, you can see how the artist moved the paint around to create a feeling of wind in the sky. In Katsushika Hokusai's The Great Wave, look at the movement of the waves against the movement of the boats. We'll be talking more about this painting later. For our project on movement, we will be making koi fish move through water. I have been searching up some images of koi fish and have found a few that I want to work with for this project. Uh, you have uh, on your computer, you have a video that gives you one tutorial. I'm going to do a tutorial of our whole project really quickly. Uh, you will be able to research images of koi fish to work with. Um, so after you find one you like, I like this one, I like this one, and what I'm really looking at is the curve of the line through the back of the fish, and that's going to be my starting point for this. So um, I'm going to set this aside, and you may or may not be able to see it, but I'm going to um, make that kind of curved line that comes down like this, and then I'm going to start by going back in where the head would be, and um, going back thins as it gets closer to the tail and then off either side I'm going to go ahead and put in the eye area and I did, these don't have to be perfect yet and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exaggerate the, the little whiskers that they have and go off the side here and create the fins and this fin here and this goes back, and then I'm going to do this. Once I've got the basic shape in, and I'm going to be asking you to do more than one fish, I'm going to ask you to do two fish, but once you have the basic shape in, you will use Sharpie to go over your lines, um, and you know you can embellish a little bit and add more um, to it as you add the Sharpie. You know, like I'm adding some like wiggliness here in the fin area. And I can make it thicker in places if I want to, if it's too thin somewhere. And I can go in and add some kind of scale here. I'm going to go ahead and color in this eye a little bit. Yeah, same on this side. Go ahead and color in this eye a little bit. All right, now what we're gonna be doing too this week is using crayon, and a lot of people think of crayons as like little kid tools. Um, the thing is, crayon is a lot more malleable than you think it is. Um, so koi tends to have a lot of um, oranges and sometimes blacks in it, but we're gonna stick with just orange and white. The hard part's gonna be the white, but um, you will pick certain areas of your fish to put the, the gold color in. Uh, they're kind of just big goldfish. Um, and kind of map in some areas where you want that orange to be. Um, I'm kind of looking at the one that I have over here to kind of give me some ideas. It does not have to match perfectly. Um, and you can make choices about where you would like it to be. Now, as you're beginning to color with crayon, this is the part I want you to think about. You can use um, multiple shades of orange to achieve this. And notice that I'm coloring kind of scaly and going in and layering different colors of orange within here. But I have to build up a really rich waxy surface because I'm eventually going to paint over this with blue watercolor and the wax will resist the watercolor and if I don't have enough wax down then um, it won't do what it's supposed to. Um, so I would spend a good amount of time layering this. I'm kind of rushing so that you can kind of see the process a little bit more clearly. Um, when it gets to the end I sometimes just take a little bit of yellow and go
go in and blend all of it together. Um, but you want it to look kind of fish scaly and you can see the kind of like upside down U's that I'm making here that will create a little bit of that. Then with the white, I'm gonna start right up against the edge of that. And I want that white to kind of blend and uh, in and around. Now if I want to have some sort of shadow kind of shape there, I might use a little bit of um, violet around in these areas to kind of imply that there's like a little bit of a shadow here. And you can layer crayon, and a lot of people don't realize that it's a, it's a, it's a material that we can use that actually doesn't have to look like very childish. It can look very... Um, unique it can give a very interesting quality to a surface but only if you know how to use it um, I'm gonna really lightly in a few places put in like a few of those little scaly parts even though that area I expect to be white and then I'm gonna use my white crayon all over it now I would continue this process for a while um, until he was completely covered and then you can kind of rub your finger over it and if you can feel that it's waxy it's going to make it a more um, more acceptable to the watercolor that we're gonna put on it in a few minutes so um, this is one that I've gotten farther on and you'll notice that I've added some Japanese characters into this uh, koi fish are Japanese um, and we will be, um, I'll be encouraging you to find some things other than the fish to include in this. You could put lily pads in it, um, you could put Japanese characters in it, you could put anything that you think might liven up the composition that applies to the fish. So I'm just going to show you with this fish how when we put the watercolor over it, you'll be able to get a rich kind of surface. Now I'm putting multiple kinds of blue watercolor into. I'm not just going to choose one. Um, blue and orange are complementary colors and so um, when the blue um, of the water blends with the orange of the koi fish it makes a nice striking composition and you can see that the wax is making it so it um, right off of the, the fish. You can see how it just kind of bubbles up right there. So for the next few days this is what we're going to be working on and you'll be able to create a lovely image um, and I look forward to seeing what you create. <laughs>